Blog Talk Radio. Home of the stars, through the airwaves and on the big screen. Coming to you live from Hollywood, it's Rated G Radio with your host, Garrett Miller. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rated G Ready. We're actually kicking the week off on a Tuesday, believe it or not, and we're going to have Mr. Rob Watson joining the show in just a second. You'll know him from previous guest appearances on the show, but he's also the very popular co-host of Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara, Santa Cruz's Out in Santa, how, how would that be? He's very popular in Santa Barbara for the radio show he hosts in Santa Cruz. He's the radio co-host of Out in Santa Cruz on KSCO 1080 AM on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. You can go and listen to that show anytime you want, either online or if you're in the Santa Cruz area. Always encourage that. But we're going to bring Rob on in just a second after I tell you what's happening the rest of this week. Tomorrow night on Tuesday's show, we have Mr. Bruce Hart. Bruce is one of these character actors that you've seen on lots of TV shows and movies, commercials, and so on and so forth. But he's also active producing independent feature films behind the scenes. And I thought it would be fun to have Bruce come on the show and actually talk about some of his experiences, both as an actor and also somebody who makes magic happen behind the camera that you don't really ever see about. You know, when you're either watching a show or watching a movie, you're just paying your 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is you're paying, or, you know, maybe nine bucks if you're buying it on Netflix. And, you know, you're there to be entertained, but you never really see the behind the scenes stuff that goes on. And Bruce is going to talk about that. Thursday, we're lucky because Rebecca Fisk is going to join us for a second episode. It's really the first one for July, but she usually does one show a month. She's based up in the Santa Cruz area, too. It's, it, I should introduce Rob and, and Rebecca together just because they're both cool people, but she's up in Northern California for the time being. Rebecca comes on once a month, and, and she's an intuitive psychic. She takes your calls, and the phone boards go crazy nuts. And I said, you know, Rebecca, if you got a little extra time, could I squeeze an extra hour out of you in July? Because she usually comes about the third third Wednesday of the month, give or take, and she's going to come on the show on Thursday. So the little secret that I tell everybody that, and I, I tell I tell this like this the the best kept secret in the world, but it really kind of truly is. For the shows that I have psychics or mediums or those special guests on, the show is actually broadcast in a different category. And in that category, people go psychic shopping. I'm not telling stories out of tell, so this is just kind of how it is. They go psychic shopping. So, for example, if Rob was a psychic shopper, I don't think he is, but if Rob was a psychic shopper, I might have Rebecca on this week, and Rob would call in and say, I'd like to know about you know, um, my job. When am I going to find my dream job? And so, you know, Rebecca would give a reading. And then, you know, next week I would have, um, let's see, who do I have next week? I've got um, Aunt Dr. Annie on Monday, and I have a, a different psychic on next Wednesday, July 8th. And then Rob would call next Monday and say, hi, Dr. Annie, I'd like to know about my job. When I get, I'm going to find my perfect job. And then Annie tells him, you know, what she says. And more than likely, it's going to be the same thing that Rebecca said, because it just tends to be I have people who are actually good at what they do as guests. So then Rob doesn't like the answer that he gets. And then he goes and calls back in on Wednesday and says, yeah, I'd like to know about this perfect job that I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for. Okay, so he's just psychic shops. And there's you know dozens of show on blog talk with psychics and that type of stuff. So it's not like this show is any different from any others, except that I love the people who are my guests. And I'm really honored to have people like Dr. Annie, Zoe Nicholas, Rebecca Fisk, and so on on the show. Um, but those people know the routine. And the whole you know getting back to a full circle here – they will call in 15 minutes before the show starts because they want to get their call in line. And typically, I just take the calls in the order they come in. I don't, I'm, I screen the calls for the guest, but that's really, you know, pretty much it. And so I don't play favorites. I don't do any of that. It's just first come, first serve. And so anybody who wants to call in that's listening on a non-psychic night, and, and they would like to get their call answered by somebody like Rebecca for the first time. There is your secret. I'm giving you a top secret secret thing that none of the people who are psychic shopping are going to hear tonight because they're not listening to this show. They're out psychic shopping. But as a loyal listener to Radio G Radio, you're getting the inside scoop. So, Rob, what lesson have you learned about this already? I am so going to shop a uh, psychic shop. <laughs> I'm all over that. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, really, hey, like, <laughs> so you know what? I'm starting to do these little video clips at the beginning of the week. I usually do them on Sunday. And I put it up on YouTube and I put it up on Facebook just as a, a little video introduction of what's going to be happening for the week. And I was telling Rob right before the show that I'm, 
Um, I just have to figure out the date. So it's going to happen sooner than later. But I'm thinking starting next week, most of Rated G Radio will then will be broadcast on a new platform. And we'll, you can interact and you can call in just like you normally do. But if you want to watch the show live, you'll actually see me. It's fascinating watching me sitting in my office chair eating peanuts or sipping my green tea while the guest is talking. But you will have that capability as a guest also as a viewer to the show or a listener. So I'm trying to find different ways to do something fun and exciting. Um, But all of that will be taking place next week. But um, I'm so off track here, Rob. (laughs) No, as I say, just, and the secret, you know, I'm going to let our our secrets out here is that um, Karen and I both admitted to each other that we print before we uh, even do radio. So we're ready for video. You know, whatever, what, bring it on. Is, that is Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, this is something that I think a lot of people find that might find hysterical, but I really, for me, it's always been true. Um, I don't necessarily wear a suit and tie when I do this show. That's absolutely not the case. But it's extremely rare that I'm going to be like in, you know, um, you know, a, a beat up T-shirt and with my hair mussed up and something like that. I might not be ready to go to the club or something, Rob. But you know, I, I don't really look like a slouch when I when I'm doing that. So now we're going to, because we've committed to this ahead of time, I've now had to up the ante. So I'm going to actually have to wear a clean shirt. I can't just eat the shirt that I've dripped mustard (laughs) on for my salad at dinner and expect to be able to do the show. So it'll have additional accountability. It actually is a challenge. I do podcasts for the next family and, uh, (laughs) <laughs> that my biggest downfall in trying to get those podcasts going isn't the material I'm doing. It's I have to shower and get everything right and sit in the light the right way and all this stuff right. that, um, yeah, you know, it's like, it's just, uh, it's, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to stick to radio and writing for a little while. I think. Well, then, then I think that's a great thing for you to do. And then offline, I'm going to ask you about some of your camera tips and tricks just so I can make sure I'm as as presentable as possible in the coming weeks. You know, and I'm I'm talking about like this, like it's no big deal, but it really is the next evolution of Rated G Radio. It's going to be Rated G TV. And I don't know what it's really going to look like. I'm very excited about it, but it's kind of been a project that's been in the back of my head for about six or eight months. And I I mean, believe it or not, I bought a green screen. I've got the lighting. I've got all of this stuff. But here's the deal, folks. I really don't have like 48 hours to put together a half an hour or an hour radio show or a TV show every day because it's a team of one. And doing the green screen and doing all the lighting and then doing the post-production on it, and doing all, it actually takes a little bit of work. And so we're going to just kind of have um, my Rated G Radio banner up in the background, warts and all, and you're just going to kind of get me the way it is. But uh, with Rob's help, I'll try to be presentable for you. So I'm giving you that yeah, as my no, for the- I, I'll tell you one one little anecdote. No natural light. It, that screwed me up. I was on um, Huffington Post Live, and I had my whole thing set up. I was in front of this big window in my home. I was on their camera with a bunch of other people. We were interviewing um, Jesse from Modern Family and asking him questions about real gay dads asking the TV gay dad questions. And they switched the camera to me, and right at that moment – the sun hit the window <laughs> in front of me, and I'm looking at myself on this, this screen, and I go completely washed out white. I mean, we're talking Crypt Keeper. And I was like, going, okay, <laughs> note to self, artificial lighting from now on. So, yeah, there's my tip. So, with a, now, do you set the artificial lighting up yourself, or is that something that, um, you know, you – I mean, you just have kind of like preset in your office area now, so when you know you're going to do that, you just click the on button. How do you have it set up? No, I I, I recreate it every time, you know, which is not good. I need, I you know, I'm, I'm actually in the beginning stages. I need to get it all much better organized and that type of thing. But, you know, but no, it is. It's a big deal because you have, you have to get plenty of sleep the night before. You know, it's like it's, uh, of course, it would be easier if I was a 20-year-old and, you know, things are a lot more in place you know, on the spot, but you know, this well, is the reality. So, so let me ask you this, because again, we're way off topic, folks. So sometimes that's what we do with live radio. We talk about other things that yeah. we want to talk about. So 
It's it's my show, so we're going to talk about things that are going on in Rob's life here. So a few weeks ago, you had to make the drive all the way down from your place in Northern California down to do a, a live TV interview in L.A., and you didn't really right. even have – and if you don't want to talk about this, you can just tell me – but you didn't have any guarantee oh, no. that they were going to use you. There was no offer to pay for anything. This is all on your own dime. If If – you would have had something available to be set up in your home like Sarah Palin does up in Alaska in her home. Would you have been able to just do the interview from your home, or is this still something they wanted you to be, like, in studio for? No, they, they, would, have, uh, they would have had me in a studio. The, the reason, though, I was driving to L.A. was because I was actually marrying this wonderful couple in Lompoc the next day. Oh, well, that's right. Okay, and you're doing, so, you're doing yeah. the – yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, said, welcome to my life. It's like, it's like it's I, yeah, I run to L.A. and marry Kipples and da-da-da. And, and I was talking to you at some point. Oh, you were you had a busy day that week, too, because you were doing your um, preview at the Revolver. It was, oh, yeah, it was, it was uh, June 4th, so there we go. So I, I remember that now, and um, that was so much fun. I was actually getting... My uh, Blonde Jesus extension is taken out today, so after the show tonight, I'm going to be posting a new updated profile picture. And I will tell I'm, you, my I'm hair actually, actually intrigued. Yeah, <laughs> it, well, my hair grew a lot in the last three months, but it's definitely not as um, you know long and flowing as it was. But it, uh, what it's done is given me hope that if I can you know be kind of okay and not you know do anything really crazy with my hair in the next few months, probably about by September, October, my hair will be back almost to the same length that it was today by the time I had it cut off. So, or not cut off, but the extensions taken out. So, you know, I, I look at myself today, Rob, and it was really interesting because, you know, you know, I come from a corporate background, you know, you know, short hair, you know, no facial hair, you know, suit and tie, very uptight, blah, blah, blah. And um, I, my visual appearance is absolutely completely the opposite of that now. And I, I look back at those pictures and I'm going, I don't think I could go back to that look any longer. Cause that's just not who I am. I don't know if this is who I am right now, but it, it's who I am today. I don't know. Well, you, you, you and I are like brothers from another mother. I mean, we're, we're, we have so many parallels like that cause I'm the same way, very corporate and all that. And I've been off work for a year. Um, yeah. and obviously not, not busy. Cause so I would call into your psychics and say, you know, about that dream job, <laughs> you know, I need right. it now, but, um, but I'm the same way. You know, I'm right now I've got a beard. I've got, you know, similar to your Jesus beard. I'm pretty much right there with you. I don't have, my hair is not as long as yours. Um, extensions or no, but, uh, yeah, that there, I, I am going back to that. So, um, there will be a haircut and a razor in my future, but that's okay. But it's kind of fun, you know, cause you know, you, I don't know. Even when I had, you know, short er hair, um, it, you know, I just always, you know, would always try to, you know, I, growing it long was growing it to the top of my ear. I mean, that's how, you know, that's how crazy I was <laughs> yeah. at the time. And now I'm going like, it's, well, it's not far enough down, you know, down my shoulders right now. It needs to grow longer. So, you know, I don't know. But I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for the fact that, you know, I have the opportunity to do this show um, trying to you know get back on track because otherwise, Rob, I will take you in 48 other directions that won't. And will and at the end of the show, they'll say they were supposed to talk about the SCOTUS ruling on marriage equality, and they talked about hair for an hour. So I don't want to do that to any of the listeners, but um, I am grateful to be able to do this show. I'm grateful for my day clients that I work with on a regular basis who uh, funnel me business, so I can continue to do this and pursue my music career and do things like that. So, you know, for everybody out there who's listening. Um, you know, who's looking to pursue their dream, you know, pursue your dream, but also make sure you've got something that is supporting that dream along the way. So don't, um, you know, don't just quit your day job because you said, I'm going to go, you know, be the lead singer of this rock band and we're going to make it no matter what. And, you know, six months from now, you're, you know, doing something that you you know would rather not be doing when you could have just had the same job you had and lived your dream on the weekend or something like that. But I you know, you know I, what, what you just said, though, I, I really want to echo that because one thing I found this last year has been absolutely amazing for me in the things that I've been involved with, uh, you know, the the stuff that, you know, I've had a voice and, you know, I've had a voice on radio, I've had a voice in writing, and, um, and I'm, I've got a few other things to share with you that happened this week that were actually pretty incredible in terms of, of some of that outreach. But what you just said is 
I really find very true for myself that for me it has been much more rewarding to uncouple the need to make money with the thing that I love the most and do something that I really enjoy doing to make money. But I'm just running into so many people who are are almost agonizing over the fact that they're not making money at the thing they love. And when they start making money, they end up, you know, having to alter it to such an extent that it's not what they were setting out to do in the first place. So yeah, and I really buy that concept. Well, maybe we can have you back to talk about that on a, on another night because I will tell you that that is something that I've I've struggled with a little bit in, in the last year. It's like you know how much do I give up? Do I give up completely? Do I just only do this one thing? And you know how much money should I have saved up if I'm only going to do that one thing? And then when do I need to start you know looking at at reevaluating that thing that I wanted to do? Blah 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 blah. So yeah. yeah. So we'll have you back to talk about that on another night. We'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, everybody. Energy quality. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That only took 16 minutes to get to, Rob. Well, you know, it, it should be fair. I, I can't imagine <laughs> anybody listening who has not been totally saturated with that subject. I mean, when you yeah. and I talked last week, we, we actually we had slightly other subjects we were going to deal with, but we were very aware this this could come down, and it did. Um I have been sort of amazed, I don't know about how you've experienced it, but each day has almost been like a different side of this has kind of emerged as I've gotten out there. It's like Friday was absolutely rainbows and unicorns and butterflies and, you know, all of that everywhere, just euphoria. And then yesterday I sort of came across more, if I had to label it, I would say it was polygamous day um, because that was what everybody was throwing at me was, you know, what about polygamy? Like, what? And right. then today I have fallen into the kind of woodwork of um, dogmatic religious people who suddenly have woken up that this issue is even out there. It's it's really been very strange. So I've I've had like these three faces of Eve around marriage equality the, the last few days. Wow. Well, you know, it is kind of true because I think you know, you know, you and I talked ahead of time, and I talked to a lot of people who were really nervous, to be quite honest, about the Supreme Court ruling, and and I don't know what it was about what was going to take place, but just in my gut of gut and my heart of hearts, I said, well, it's going to happen. I mean, it, there's just no doubt. I, I just knew it like I knew it like I knew it. And I haven't, and when it comes to, you know, things like that, you know, I'm really not going to go out ahead of time and say, well, don't, don't worry people. It, you don't have to worry about, you know, the Supreme court ruling because, you know, it's going to be okay. Cause I don't know. I don't have any connections there. Right. Even if I did, right. I couldn't say anything, it, but I just well, knew. I had- I, I actually went even further. I was overly optimistic. Let's put it that way. I thought it was going to come down. I actually, I thought it was going to come down on Friday. Um, And I, but I thought it was going to come down even stronger than it did. And there, it wasn't really rash speculation on my part. The reason I did was because the Supreme Court, when the original cases started to hit it from the other circuits. The the Supreme Court had a choice to take the case at that point. They chose not to, which meant that in many states, they were already greenlighting same-sex marriage taking place, like Utah and Idaho Mm -hmm. and all of these states that were not all that wanting to have that happen. And they greenlit it. The thing that greenlights it from the Supreme Court perspective is it would take an extra justice to say, I don't want to hear that. So somebody who ultimately voted against marriage equality at that time did not care to open it up and should have foreseen that they were already setting the ball in motion. My guess is that John Roberts that did that. Um, because he seemed he seemed to be talking both sides. One, he seemed on board with everybody being elated about it, but he also was, you know, 
from his verbiage, almost nasty about, you know, this is a gift. It's not really a constitution, but we're giving it to you anyway. And um, so what I was do you think about that? I mean, you know, I, just from a gut level, you know, tell me more about why you why you feel that way. I feel sort of frustration and a bit of an anger around it, uh, almost on a purist intellectual standpoint. I don't see how it is possible to look at the um, 14th Amendment to the Constitution and put up the facts of marriage, that it is 1,500 rights, regulations, and due process that is around that relationship. Put those up against the 14th Amendment and not see that it applies. It, it, is, it is just intellectually inconceivable to me to come back with any other conclusion on that. So okay, let with, me with, let me let me throw this out at you just from a because I I agree with you so don't, I'm not trying to you know play two sides of the of the coin here but you know would you say the same if it were maybe a different issue you know you know because you know the other you know issue that's always been out there that's always been such a hot button for our nation is like abortion you know and some people say you know women has a right to choose and other people don't. And, you know, when is it, you know, the state's, you know, government's right to interfere and when is it not? And all, you know, so why do you think for this particular one, um, there is just no other way to think about it? And the only reason I say that is because it's been a million years since, you know, this is, you know, this has been going on. And it's only been really the last couple of years that that there's been like this enlightenment that has suddenly and miraculously appeared across our great nation that has allowed, you know, first it was what Massachusetts and then Iowa and all the, you know, state by state by state allowed marriage equality. And then it become, you know, became such a national topic that it just kind of, you know, it had this, um, you know, mushroom cloud effect. And I think that's great because I support this a hundred percent, but why do you think it's taken so long for the, the country to get to that point when it's been so clear to you all along? Well, I I'm, I'm hope I'm answering the right question because when, when <laughs> it comes to – sorry. <laughs> I was already on the abortion thing and kind of we went, went a different direction. But on, on the abortion issue, the abortion issue ha- in, within that issue is a question that nobody has the perfect answer to. Right. Um, and that is – you know when exactly does life begin? It's, there, there are two parties involved in that. Now, w- with abortion, my feeling on abortion is I'm not a woman. I do not have a woman's body. I, in no way, have the answer to that question at all. And that's the thing that offends me the most about the abortion issue is that you know I see all the people who make decisions about that. And they are 95%, if not 100%, men. And I don't feel we have the right. And that's just my personal opinion on it. We don't have the right to tell women what is happening in their bodies with that process. It is, you know, I don't know. And, and I don't know a man that does know. We can have opinions, but we don't know. So it's, right. it's a, it, there's a whole complexity to that. And... um Whereas same-sex marriage, there really isn't because there's nothing that – everything within same-sex marriage that happens by permitting same-sex marriage was already happening in one way or another already, which mm-hmm. is not necessarily true of, of the abortion issue. It's, you know, so it's – the right wants to make them you know, draw these parallels, but because of the nature of what it is – it's it's going to have a different way that it's going to to evolve and play out. I mean, one has to do with a medical procedure, has to do with the person's you know right to their own body. It has to do with you know that you know is somebody who is inadvertently responsible for some sort of human life in some form. What it, what is their obligation? You know, there are all those kind of questions. 
with same-sex marriage, I mean, the Menendez brothers got married in prison, for goodness sake. Which so is so ridiculous. Many, how, yeah, so how many rights do you have to have to to qualify for marriage in this society? You know, it's like not a lot. You know, atheists got married, so, you know, all this thing about some sort of God-ordained thing, you know, and I'm, I'm not by any means trying to erode atheist right to marriage, but it's like we were already doing all of those things. And, the you know, the worst thing that was thrown up against same-sex marriage was the issue of having children. And, and on two levels that was a bad issue. One, in that almost all the, the couples, the LGBT couples I know who are getting married are having kids. Um, and especially in the case of gay, gay male couples, many of us, in fact, they've done a study in Cambridge University, the first choice of how a gay, gay male couple family has kids is through foster care adoption, which is a huge benefit to society, that now a group of families is actively seeking out helping that system with good homes of parents who are earnestly wanting the best for the children that they adopt. You know, that's a huge boon for society. That's not a negative. It's a huge, huge positive. And the um, the other thing that makes the whole children attachment thing to why not in terms of same-sex marriage is that in all 50 states, or I think it was like 47 states, we could have children. We could adopt children. We could get children into our lives anyway. So it wasn't about whether we could have children. It's whether when we did have children, would they be legally protected under a family court system, which now they are, which is a good thing. Right on. Whoa, there's well, a soapbox under me. How did that show up? I love it. Well, you know, and to be quite honest, you know, Rob, I, one of the reasons I like having you on as a guest is that you are very well read on all the details of topics that we want to talk about. I'm really good at like the 50,000 foot level. It, it, that's just where I'm at for pretty much everything. Unless I have to really dive down into the minutia, I really, I, I don't. And then I can trust that when you come on here, you'll know all the, the ins and outs of everything. And I am so grateful to you for spending part of your time with us tonight. So as long as we have a that. topic of my five issues, <laughs> if you go into fracking, I am totally worthless. So, Let's not well, go there. I, I was going to ask you back next next Tuesday to see if you could talk about fracking. So you've got a week to prepare. So, no, I <laughs> now won't that, I that, that I could okay. do. That I could do. Okay. 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 So, so we, ha- you know, we've had the, the the rainbows on Fridays and all the, you know, everybody was celebrating on Friday, and then you know things have kind of changed. You know, up in Santa Cruz where you live, what do you think has been the? And not, I'm not talking about what we see on like Facebook, but you know, like your friends and people that you've talked to, just going to the grocery store or you know your kids' ball games or something like that. What have you heard and seen as a result of of what happened Friday? You know, not a whole lot. We did have a really big celebration. I was not able to go to it because my um, my sons were vaccinated and they were not feeling very well that evening. So I had to, and I had to. I, I stayed home with them. Um, but my I, my co-host Steph Taylor, who um, does the radio show, was actually one of the speakers at a big event up here. And on our Saturday show, she did kind of her her spiel that she did. And she was amazing. I hope she's listening to this because she was amazing at her oratory around it. She did a real call to action of, you know, this is not over. And she just outlined so beautifully everything that we still have in front of us to accomplish. And so I think that she captured the mood of what is going on up here. And and let's face it, we've we've kind of been there for a while because we right. with the last Supreme Court decision, you know, we got marriage back in California. So, you know, in our California bubble, you know, we're there. And it was funny, I called my 88-year-old mother as I was uh, heading to the show on Saturday because I remind them that I'm on and they they tune in. Um and uh you know, they're they're not following everything. And I said, you know, did you hear about the Supreme Court decision on Friday? And she said, oh, yeah, I think so. Uh, what was that about? And, 
you know, I explained it to her, and <laughs> you know, she's very pregnant. She goes, "Okay, so, um, so what does that mean to you?" And it caught me off guard a little bit, and I said, "Well, um, okay, well, if I got married, um, I could go to Texas now, and I'd still be married." And she just burst out laughing because, first of all, you know. I don't have any marriage plans. Second of all, if I did get married, and no offense to your Texan listeners, but I'm not moving to Texas. <laughs> so we, we both kind of laugh because okay. it, it, it was, you know, in practical terms, not much changed. But, and I don't know about the Santa Cruz area, but I have to tell you, for me personally, it a lot changed. There was like a seismic shift in my whole being on Friday. And part of that is because, and this is what I realized afterwards, and I think I'm speaking for a lot of people on this. So many of us have lived with the threat of not having this, the promise that we might have it, the worry about who is in power and how harsh the wrong people in power were for decades and all of a sudden we cross the line and you know I don't know what's ahead of us but we cross this line like okay we're there it's done and that was amazing and thrilling and scary and you know explosions into rainbows and all of that I mean it just was like this wow, you know, all those years where we had elections where state after state after state were voting against us when we were just waking up to the fact that this could even possibly happen and already the machine was mobilized against us and we've gone through all that darkness and out into the light all of a sudden. So there's sort of like an almost spiritual freedom that happened on Friday for a lot of people. And, you know, now I think we're feeling some backlash. But, you know, it's I, I think it was a really profound... Can I... Can I, I want to bring a little bit of levity to the show for <laughs> just something that I saw over the course of the weekend. And I, and I, I don't want to have a laugh at somebody else's expense, but I'm going to tonight. And I hope you will, too. There is a post that came on... Oh, I think it was Friday or Saturday. It was some guy down in one of those states. So we don't, you know, if you want to go find it, that's great. But he was writing a letter to NBC compa- complaining that with the yeah. announcement of marriage equality, that NBC has turned their peacock gay and it now has the rainbow flag, you know, colors for the, the peacock. And, I, you know, the station reminded him that the NBC peacock had been the same color pattern for like 50 years or something like that, ever since there was, you know, like color TV. And I thought it was just so hysterical. So my response has been every time I see somebody post this and they just think it's the funniest thing, I said, I have a lot of sympathy for that poor man. Just imagine his his stunning realization that he'd finally saved up enough S&H green stamps to trade in his 11-inch black and white TV to a 19-inch color console with <laughs> mono stereo vision. And the first thing he sees is that NBC Peacock is now going to be rainbow colored. So, you know, you can imagine the frustration this poor man has. You know. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So Johnny Carson was a visionary. He saw yeah. same-sex marriage coming, you know, decades after his death. Decade, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Decades yeah. after his death. That's pretty wild. Well, there was another one, too, that um, I don't know if you've caught it, that, um, and it's on the Evolve Equals Facebook page if anyone wants to look this up. But um, one Catholic group has put out this ad, and the the ad itself is actually a little bit um, not so funny, more pathetic. But it is these people in – it comes out like a um, Trevor Project ad where people are talking about coming out and people accepting them and how hard it is. And, well, they're kind of weird as they are, but, you know, this is just – who they are, except the message of the ad is I'm anti-marriage equality. And that's the big coming out that these people Mm -hmm. are doing. And one woman is getting tearful, and it's like, it's just sort of weird. Well, then that that barely hits, 
and this other group has made a parody of it. And if you watch the two together, the parody is just hysterical. It is so right on with everything that is wrong with the first ad and just zings it in just the most appropriate way. So you know what? Just, I don't know if I've um, seen that, Rob. If you find that after the show, can you you know just instant message me that? Because I would I would enjoy. Oh, yeah, I definitely that. will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will. It, it, and if it's appropriate, um, you know, I'll, it, I'll post it on Facebook too. So there we go. It, you know, the audio is such that if you know in a future show, if you want to play the audio for each of them, I think it plays. It would play well even if you don't see the the visual. Just FYI, but yeah, I, it's I, I've got it in my fingertips, so I'll send it over to you. But right on. Just, you know, it's like we've got. We've got all these things that are are coming out. We've got this guy in Tennessee who, um, you know, in protest put a sign up in his, I forget what hardware store I think it was, you know, no gays allowed. It's like, give me a break. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you it, know I, it just... I, I, I saw that today, and I was I, and I totally get that everybody's upset about that. You know, and I guess my thinking is, we if it were me... And this is me. If I, you know, saw that sign, what I would want to try to do is go find the first pro LGBT business that says says everybody's welcome or congratulations on marriage equality or whatever, and then go post that and let, then let that go viral, yeah, because it, it. I think that you know, as we are going to have a lot of nitpicking in in the next you know few months and years, and this becomes something that becomes quote unquote normal, even though there was nothing abnormal about it before, but something that's more normal. You know the people that are going to hate. It, I don't want to give them any power because you're going to have them turn into that stupid pizzeria that these you know these morons felt sorry for and gave them like eight hundred thousand dollars on a GoFundMe campaign and now they're sitting pretty because everybody you know that felt sorry for them gave them twenty bucks um, and and that really bugs me, Rob. And I I think that those those people have a special kind of you know ick that's just attached to them. And no matter what you do, you know, there's not going to be any good that comes out of it. Yeah. It's there. There's a tricky thing that's, that's happening because on the one hand, um, part of this economically would just play out that, you know, the, the rejecting gay couples on a commercial level is just bad business. It's going to be right. bad business. I mean, you're, you're going to be publicized as, you know, the anti-gay place, you're, you're going to lose your gay business, but you're also going to lose 50% of the other business because a lot of people aren't going to want to shop there just out of principle. And so exactly. it's, not, it's not going to drive your business up. The thing that is a little more worrisome, though, is that we have a whole right-wing political engine ready to pounce. You know, they knew this was coming. And, you know, I've seen, you know, you know, I watched some of their stuff. And according to one of their shows, and I don't have the detail what's behind it, but they have 40 initiatives ready to go across the United States that are essentially targeting the right to discriminate, you know, right. against gay people. Yep. Yep. And so how that plays out and where it plays out is probably not going to be just as benign as, you know, oh, that hardware store doesn't like us. So it it will be interesting to see how that happens. I think that's going to One be a very thing, painful lesson for those people who are going to choose to do that. I think it's going to be not only embarrassing for them in the well, it's embarrassing now, but it's going to be really embarrassing for them in the long run. The Republicans and and I I make no secret about it. I'm a registered Republican, and I hate all of the Republicans that are out there trying to campaign for my vote. I think it's disgusting. I think they're gross. I don't understand right. why they are pandering the way that they're doing it. It doesn't make any sense to me. But if you know, for all of these Republicans and teabaggers and all of this who think that it's going to get them votes and get them enough votes to get elected by being a racist bigot, and you're going to you're going to champion uh, discrimination just because you think that's going to be you know your ticket to the office, I think you're really sorely mistaken. And I'm so disgusted with our options you know, that are out there for that. And to have people think that we can go out and selectively do this because I'm going to quit my job because I don't want to marry people of the same sex. You are the dumbest person I'm going to meet today then. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, the options right now, and it's amazing because there are so many and they're all so bad. They're all so, I mean, they're all bad. You, know, you don't even have a John Huntsman this time. You know, last time, right. at least John Huntsman was, was sort of like this, you know, 
you know, kind of, well, also Fred Kreger, although they didn't allow him on the, the dais to, to debate. And he's been um, a guest on the show before, and he is so fascinating to talk to because he's got his facts and figures down. He, he knows everything backwards and forwards, and he's not afraid to debate it with anybody. I love Fred Carger, and I think that what he stood for was absolutely fantastic, and it's a shame on how the Republican Party, you know, just beat him up because they could on the last election, you know, when he played exactly by the rules they gave him. Well, yeah, and it's... it's I don't know. The I would love to sit down with a Republican strategist and, and give them a, a, a real talking to. Even though I I have to say I'm on most issues I probably don't agree with a lot of the Republican platform, but still it just there is a part of the Republican platform that, if reasonable and discussable, is totally being overshadowed by this nonsense. Um, the one thing though there is an area that I think is potentially dark and threatening on the right that does worry me. And it has to do with, this is actually what you and I had originally talked about talking about today on the show was um, this bill that um, the Orange County lawyer has, was oh. trying to put on the California ballot. And oh. I've got some interesting background information on that. Please. One is that, you know, last week before marriage equality came through and you know stole the complete spotlight, which is appropriate, um, something very interesting happened in California, uh, especially to me personally. Um, last weekend, I wrote an article about uh, my real fear: not that this thing would ever get passed, but that there was a real engine of people behind it in right. California ready yeah. and willing to hit the street with clipboards to get signatures to get it to qualify for the ballot. Um, I had a lot of good information that this guy was not a lone lunatic, that he was actually a well-funded lawyer under the employ of somebody with money that was driving this thing. And you know what's embarrassing, Rob? He lives in he's in Huntington Beach. That's where I live. I don't even know who this guy is. And everybody that I've talked to has just been like, "This guy has got to be stopped. This is this is number one. It's morally wrong. It's fundamentally wrong." But this sends a horrible message to everybody here in Huntington Beach. And I said, "Well, do something about it then." Well, yeah. The the, the the to make you feel a little bit better, the only thing that's actually in Huntington Beach is his mailbox. Um, right. We some journalists friends and I. Uh, theoretically and allegedly tracked him down to potentially living with his parents in Costa Mesa, which isn't that far away. But that's like, still, that's, it's not, that's like across the street. So, yeah, so if exactly. I sit far enough, I can hit Costa Mesa. <laughs> right, exactly. But the thing that is even more troublesome is Scott Lively, who is the guy who was driving Uganda and the Kill the Gays bill uh, over there, has um, has opened up or is opening up at a location in Riverside, California. And so he, is, he has been planning this operation out here. Coincidence with this proposed bill of kill the gays that they were going to try to get signatures for for the California ballot. So my theory, looking at what was lining up, is that the one of the big intentions was not necessarily to be successful at that, but to hit the streets and be essentially doing hate crimes on every corner where they were asking people to sign up for a bill mm. to kill the gays. Mm. And I could not imagine walking out of a restaurant and having that conversation take place in front of my kids or any other gay family's kids, or anybody else's kids in general in this state where that would be the street conversation of, do you want to sign this proposal, which will allow us to kill gay people on site? So I wrote this article that was really highlighting the concerns and how I really felt this should go to a federal court, you know, because we hit a place where our initiative process and people's street civil rights were going to be at odds with each other, where the the act of trying to put something on the ballot was actually in itself going to be a hate crime. And uh, Camilla Harris was in court trying to fight it. Right. My view was her argument was 
you know, she was saying, well, it's not constitutional. Well, that's what people do is they put things on the ballot to change the Constitution. So mm-hmm. I didn't quite see how her argument was going to hold up in court. It ultimately did. But, and this was the thing that was where it was personally moving to me, was following my article coming out over the weekend, that Monday the California Assembly met and passed a resolution soundly um, uh, condemning this initiative, condemning the actions that would have to take place, vowing that they would stop it at whatever means available to them to stop it. And then the day following that, the judge that Camilla Harris was in front of came out and said, no, this bill is not, this is not going to go forward. And they just killed it. Whether it'll be appealed, I don't know. But they essentially closed it down at that level. Um, The personal anecdote that I can tell you was that it wasn't a coincidence that the California Assembly acted on that after my article came out. I talked to my journalist friends, and they said that that article had gotten in front of the Democratic caucus over the weekend. Right on. Every one of their mailboxes. So that, that was not a coincidence. That happened, you know, in concert with, you know, raising my hand and saying this is really a horrible thing. Um, whether the judge, <laughs> I don't know that it went there, but, you know, whatever. The the thing that scares me, though, and this is my real point, is there are people out there that are incredibly hateful, not adverse to violence, and I think we have to watch it and we have to be careful. Um, I don't think this is going to be an isolated thing, that that they are going to get desperate and they are going to try something. And so I, I'm thrilled at where marriage equality is, but I think we, we as a community have to watch our backs. Um, you know, people are burning down black churches in the South. You know, it's like we have pushed the people who don't like us to a level that they could be dangerous. So there's my cautionary tale. Okay, and I and I agree. And I and if you're in any place in any part of this wonderful country that we call the United States, and you're in a position where you feel that you can't be as excited about this ruling as we are, just for fear of whatever, you know, just be careful. Let's. I I want to say that first and foremost. So you don't go off and do something that is going to get you hurt or otherwise um, in any type of danger. So don't do that. Uh, you know, Rob, I don't know if you have access to your computer while we're talking. There was a cartoon that I saw on Facebook earlier today, and I just shot this over to you. And it's about this, you know, of course, wonderfully white family. It's, and the cartoon says, it's not prejudiced if you call it religion. And then the little girl says, God told us to hate you. And as she's throwing a rock at somebody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I'm looking at it now. Yeah. I, I'll have to send you one um, from a past. It, it was last year of a children's book that came out in um, Nebraska that was essentially an anti-gay family children's book. So, yeah, it's this stuff is, is my, I guess my point, part of my point is that as these things come up, it, I think it's going to be important for us that are watching it to take threats seriously. Yeah. Because I think one of the I think mistakes with this guy in Orange County is, you know, everybody kind of took him as a crackpot, lone shooter. Um, you know, there was uh, – I talked to uh, Charlotte Church, the woman who put a kind of counter amendment. You know, she filed for that, that it was, you know, that to send him to um, sensitivity training and, and all that. She was on a radio show. Wonderful lady. But it, I think it's important that we not – look at these people when they do these things and not take it as a credible threat. And that's the only way we're going to stay ahead of it is, you know, if they start making noise, take it seriously. I, okay. So I'm going to agree with you that, you know, if they start making noise, take it as a credible threat, but I also am not one that I I necessarily want to give them all kinds of publicity just for being a douche, you know? And so, you know, my thing is if you see that, and if it needs to be taken as a threat, you know, report it accordingly. But if you're going to, you know, be posting it, this is me, this is my soapbox, Rob, so there you go. So if you're me and you're going to post on Facebook, I'd rather much see, you know, somebody celebrating the fact that, oh, you know, here's a business or here's a 
a person or here's a whatever that you know is um, open and accepting and they and they get it. You know, I think it's also about you know sharing the stories of people who are really out there, either changing or or open and embracing. Because you know it's really I, easy, and I, and th- I think that we fall into that trap of where we go and and you know the oh you know Donald Trump said this or so and so did that or you know because it's easy to throw that stone and and it's it's not quite as fun. It's I think for me it's fun, but it's not quite as fun for a lot of people to see that good news story. And for me, I'm I, I'm more that good news guy. Yeah, no, I agree with you. In especially in. I think there is an initiative that would be nice to see the LGBT network pick up, and that is to go to communities, especially in these states where there is so much animosity, where they were, you know, they've been dragged kicking and screaming into this, and find the the positive network, you know. Right. Okay, not to be cliche, but Garrett, isn't it... <laughs> Almost absurd but. that the network that we are worrying the most about are florists and cake bed decorators. It's ridiculous. Don't you think we have the talent in the LGBT community to do some knock down, drag out floral arrangements and cakes yeah. for our yeah. own weddings? And, and I've been saying this all along, and, and I get the fact, the reason that these two types of businesses, I don't want to say they've been targeted, but they're easy to make light of just simply because of the marriage equality issue. But, you know, if I went to any place and they said, you know, we don't like, you know, this or that, and you could you can put gay, you could put, you know, a person of a specific race, you could put maybe they don't like men, maybe they don't like women, maybe they don't like the color of your hair, maybe they don't like the day of the week or whatever. If you don't like it and it really chaps your hiney on – who you are at your core, don't do business with them. I'll guarantee you there is somebody else out there that is going to love to help you and take your money and do a great job. But more specifically, and and so if we're going to be on soapbox, I'm just putting my second soapbox up there. If you're that concerned about it, you really should first be searching out LGBT businesses, especially small business LGBT business, and to support your local business owners who really need that local dollar spent every single time, not going out and proving a point that, you know, Susie down the street hates gays, so she's not going to do our wedding. I was never going to hire Susie in the first place. I was going to go to pride florist down the street or whatever the case is. You right. know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, th- so- I think that's true. Although, you know, the ones that have, the cases that have happened, um, were done really where the people involved, I think, did do kind of that due diligence, blindsided. And I really, I really do feel for them in those situations because I do too. the last thing, I'm sorry, I do too. I I agree with oh, you. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's it's it, so the thing that kind of irks me on the other side, and I am in agreement with you that you know I think we should have this kind of like rainbow network of, you know, this will make your occasion incredible and give back to the people who really, really support you. Um, but the the thing that um, bothers me is that a lot of the people who want to discriminate and they want to have the right to tell a gay couple, you're not good enough, we don't serve your kind here, Mm-hmm. are not willing to put that up front. They're not willing to put a sign in their window saying, right. I don't really yeah. support marriage right. equality. You may legally mm-hmm. force me to do it, but I don't really support it. If they put yeah. that sign up, I guarantee you no gay couple is going to hire them. Ever. You know, Ever. It's like we don't want them to spit in our icing. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's maybe, like we're not idiots. Maybe, you know, maybe those businesses should say, We'll serve everybody, but by the way, you know, we don't support marriage equality, you know, or something stupid like that because, you know, but it, wouldn't that be a whole lot easier to know that, okay, you know, boy, I'm going to come in here. Let's let's say it's a restaurant or something like that, you know, you and, you know, six of your friends or eight of your friends, you're going to go in there and you're, and you're bill because, you know, everybody's going to have an adult beverage and everybody's going to, we're going to split some appetizers. We already, you know, order the, the entree and then some of us get dessert and then coffee. So, you know, your, your tab's going to be, you know, let's say a thousand bucks or something like that. 
wouldn't you rather know ahead of time that the people there are looking at you back in the kitchen going, we hate those people, you know? Well, and it, yeah. That, versus that's going thing. anywhere else. I mean, we've had, yeah, we've had that a couple of times where the, they do not want to be known. They know that will happen. They want the right to discriminate, but they want to do it quietly. Yeah, so I they're totally know. willing yeah. to go, we, we, we're, we're, not, we're not serving your kind, get out. But yeah, they yeah. don't want anybody. They don't want you to tell anybody. I mean, we had that with Prop Eight, where you know there were restaurants that were supportive of Prop Eight, and they were freaked out because it got out that they had donated. Well, I want to know. I don't want to, you know, buy somebody's mm-hmm. pizza that that is, you know, been investing against me. I, I just don't. Exactly. And, um, yeah. So, New Mexico's Supreme Court came out exactly this way. And with the photographer case and said, you know, in our state with our non-discrimination rules, you could do this. You could say, I don't agree with it. I don't like it. You know, I will provide those services. And, you know, but they they weren't willing to do it. The one scary thing, though, and this is the thing that people don't realize, so many states, they can totally discriminate against us without the slightest eyelash blink. They're not non-discrimination ordinances around universally. And so, you know, we're a lot more susceptible for this kind of discrimination than, you know, the public is being led to believe. Well, then, okay, so when we have those types of situations here, Rob, then we need to, you know, call them out and call them out loudly. Agreed. Okay. See, now we're we're on the same page. (laughs) We got back there. We're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. We got three and a half minutes left, and I want to play a little bit of gay wedding because I'm I'm trying to do the shameless plug to sell some, you know, units of of, my stuff online. So yeah, so I've been waiting for it. So okay, so what do we want to say, like in the last minute of the show, that would really help and inspire people for their week? Well, I will I will add one other anecdote that happened to me this week that was very moving is speak out about this stuff because you will be so close to the conversation you can't believe it. One other piece I wrote about the play and then came Tango, um, I heard from the playwright this week thanking me, and it was such a thrill to connect with the woman who wrote the play that I defended. And just, you know, it's a, it's really a wonderful community that we have networked here, and go for it. There we go. Right on. Everybody, it's been Mr. Rob Watson. You can find him on, well, Rob is kind of like this phenom. He is everywhere. You're going to hear him this Saturday night on Out in Santa Cruz, KSCO 1080 AM radio. You can also go to that website and hear the show live every Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Rob writes for the Huffington Post. He writes for, who else do you write for? You write for everybody. Uh, You can find me on LGBTQ Nation. Um, You can find me on the next uh, family. I am an editor on the Goodman Project. Um, Evol Equals is my blog site, and you can find my Facebook page, Evol Equals, on Facebook, and J and J Dad on Twitter. Did I tell you he's everywhere? Okay, so everybody, sit back for the next minute and forty-eight. We've got gay wedding coming up. We're going to be live tomorrow night with Mr. Bruce Hart. Tune in for that live at seven o'clock. Rob, thank you very much. Rob, hang on the line. But Rob, thank you very much, and we'll see you all on Tuesday. Great, I'm Dan. Hey, sister.
sister, she can be your wife. Hey sister, sister, true love. Hey sister, sister, go on, take her hand. Hey sister, sister, true love. You've been listening to Rated G Radio.